Let's begin with a simple property node example. Let's create a Boolean control. And let's create a property node for it. The way to create a property node is to right click from the Create submenu, choose Property Node. When you choose Property Node, it presents you with a list of all the possible properties to select. Let's start with Visible. The property node is placed on the block diagram and observe the structure. Property nodes can be expanded by clicking on the handle on the bottom to have as many or as few inputs as are required. In addition, each of the displayed properties can be changed by using our finger tool to click on it and then select of the available properties. Also, each property can be read from or written to. In this case, we wish to write to the visible property. So we right click on the property and choose Change to Write. If we have multiple properties displayed, we can choose to change all of them either to read or to toggle back and change them all to write. The online help provides information about each property, including live help while we're selecting a property. So in order to set the visible property of this control, let's create a control and just call this visible. Observe now when we run the VI, if we set visible to true and we run it, then the Boolean remains visible. If we set visible to false and we run it, then the Boolean disappears. Let's investigate this a little bit further by adding a while loop. So we create a while loop around our property node, create a stop button control, create a short delay, and now observe that we can turn on and off the property of the Boolean. Next, let's add a second property. We've set up the visibility property. Let's also add the disabled property. Again, we expand our property node to show two terminals. We choose the disabled property. Again, we activate our online help and hover over the property to see the options. We see here that disabled has three possible values. The input type is a U8 integer, and a 0 indicates enabled, a 1 indicates disabled, and a 2 indicates disabled and grayed out. So let's create a control for this, and we can experiment with the behavior. Remember that a disabled value of 0 means that it's enabled. If we set the disabled value to be 1, notice how we can no longer click on the control. A value of 2 has the same behavior, but adds the appearance of being grayed out. Also notice that we can still toggle the visible behavior. So this is an example of perhaps the two most common properties that one needs to use to set for controls and indicators. Nearly any behavior which can be performed on a control on the front panel while the VI is stopped can be performed while the VI is running using property nodes. As another example, let's add a numeric horizontal pointer slide. Let's change the values to be minus 100 to plus 100. And what we wish to do is to use this slide to actually change the position of this control while the VI is running. What we wish to do first is to use a property node to get to the current position of this Boolean. So let's do so. We're going to right click again on the Boolean, choose Create Property Node, Position, Left. And what this has done is created a property node which tells us the left coordinate of the control at the time that the VI has started. And also notice this is set up to be read, which is exactly what we want. We're going to expand our existing property node, the one where we're writing, and choose the same property. Position, left. And next, 
we're going to add the add function. Change the representation of our slide to be an integer. And simply add together the control value to the original position and replace the position with that value. And observe now, when we run the VI, see how because the slide position was initially set, we see how it has moved the Boolean. If we put that back to zero, we see the Boolean was in its initial position. We have the ability to drag and move a control. Meanwhile, we can still activate and change the behavior, the visibility, and the enabled state of our indicator. For our next example, open the NI example finder, enter string as our keyword, scroll down to the string property node example. If we show the block diagram, we see that several property nodes are being used and activated on this particular demonstration control. Many of these properties are particular to strings, but also many of them are available to almost every other type of control. For example, the key focus, the visibility, and the disabled case. Let's run this VI and take a look at the behavior. So we're, here we have our demonstration control. This is the control which is being worked on by all of the property nodes. So again, we can toggle our visibility. We can change the enabled state to be enabled, disabled, or disabled and grayed out. A new one is called a key focus. What key focus does is it, it is equivalent to having clicked on the control. In this case, because it's a string, it shows that we have selected a portion of the string. If it was a Boolean or a numeric, it would be as if we had clicked on the control and it's now capable of being typed into. We can turn that key focus on and off. In addition, particular to strings is the ability to scroll to a particular line. So notice that we're not changing the value in the string. We're merely scrolling through it, as we can see by enabling the scroll bar. So doing the scroll to line is equivalent to having clicked through it. But notice that it doesn't let us permanently change the position of the scroll because this property node is consistently being written to. If we turn off key focus, we can modify the display style. So we see here we have normal, but we also have the other typical string choices, which is to show the slash codes, password mode, or hexadecimal display. Finally, if we turn on the key focus, we see we have control over the selection range. We can see that by moving the slider up and down, we can change the selection mode, and in fact, which characters are selected within the string. And again, each of these particular property nodes are accessed by right-clicking on the string control, choosing Create Property Node. The next important set of property nodes are those which adjust the appearance of graphs. Open up the Graph Property Node example from the website. Let's run and observe the behavior. If we start the VI, we see that we have our typical disabled status, which gives us a 0, 1, and 2. Again, in this case, we're acting on the waveform graph indicator. We can turn on and off the visibility. We also have several controls which allow us to adjust the property nodes of some graph-specific properties. We can change the scale. Or we can change the color. Now these are all actions which we could perform while the VI is running or while it's stopped manually by right-clicking on the graph. However, it is convenient in some cases to be able to change these values programmatically. So let's stop the VI and take a look at the block diagram code. Again, we have a property node for the waveform graph which has been expanded to have multiple inputs. Again, we have a while loop so that any changes to our controls will automatically update in the property node. And the code outside the loop is just generating the data for the graph. So observe the typical visible and disabled properties. We also have a legend visible, which if we expand in order to select properties, we see that there is an entire legend category of properties. 
Again, if we activate our online help and revisit the property selector, then we get an update showing what each of these properties means. Here we've set the Y scale, and that's been done by choosing Y scale, range, minimum, and the second one is maximum. It's clear that there are a large quantity of properties available. In fact, nearly everything that you can do manually can be done automatically using property nodes, the result of which is that you have a tremendous number of properties. It's always important to rely on the context help to remind you which property is which, although the ones being shown here right now are probably the most typically used. What is worth discussing is the way to set up multiple plots via properties. In this case, we have two plots we're changing the name and the color of each of them on the fly. The way this is performed, as you can see here, there's this first input called active plot. The way that the property node works is that it executes from top to bottom. In order to apply properties to a particular plot within the graph, we need to first specify which plot, and we do that using the active plot property. So setting active plot to zero means all subsequent calls will be applied to that plot. And that's why by choosing active plot zero, we then apply the plot number one name and the plot number one color. Next, we set the active plot to one, which means that all subsequent calls from that point forward will apply to plot number two, and so on. So if you had many plots, you could set up a loop, which writes to a property node, incrementing automatically the active plot using the loop index terminal.